Well, hello and welcome to the third and final of our Good Friday Reflections from Matthew's Gospel. Um, I'm Tim Partridge, the curate uh, here at St Andrew's Church, uh, and I hope you've enjoyed journeying through um, Good Friday uh, with these reflections, a chance to consider Jesus dying at the cross. So we're in Matthew chapter 27. Uh, do pick up a Bible as we look down at verse 45 together, uh, and I'll read the passage before leading us in a short reflection. So Matthew chapter 27, reading from verse 45. From the sixth hour until the ninth hour, darkness came over all the land. About the ninth hour, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing there heard this, they said, he's calling Elijah. Immediately one of them ran and got a sponge. He filled it with wine vinegar, put it on a stick and offered it to Jesus to drink. The rest said, now leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes to save him. And when Jesus had cried out again in a loud voice, he gave up his spirit. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks split. The tombs broke open and the bodies of many holy people who had died were raised to life. They came out of the tombs and after Jesus' resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many people. When the centurion and those with him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and all that had happened, they were terrified and exclaimed, surely he was the son of God. Many women were there watching from a distance. They'd followed Jesus from Galilee to care for his needs. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Joses, and the mother of Zebedee's sons. Let's pray together. Our Father in heaven, as we consider these three hours of darkness before Jesus gave up his spirit, Please, would your words speak truth and life into our minds, hearts and beings. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I want to start by talking about Easter Sunday. In my family, we'll be sharing chocolate eggs on Easter Sunday to celebrate Easter together. And I expect you may too. I was taught at school that Easter is celebrated with eggs because eggs are the sign of new life. Easter happens in the spring and uh, springtime is the time for new life and so Easter and new life go together. Well, that is true. But new heart, new life at the heart of Easter is not the whole message Matthew wants to get across to us in this reflection. You see, Matthew wants to show us Easter is not about being born but being born again. Resurrection life is at the heart of Easter. It's Good Friday and so it's right for us to remember Jesus' death, dying for us in our place on the cross. We could linger over the three hours of darkness as God the Father forsook God the Son who was bearing our sin willingly for us. We could linger over the fact that Jesus chose the moment of his own death as he gave up his spirit and died. But Matthew doesn't want to overwhelm us with the darkness of death in this story. He wants to show us resurrection life. He wants us to see that Good Friday is truly good. And he's the only gospel writer who, who includes that story that he mentions in verse 52. What happened in the tombs around Jerusalem at the moment Jesus died? Verse 52, the tombs broke open and the bodies of many holy people who had died were raised to life. This sounds like no ordinary occurrence, does it? But then Good Friday was no ordinary day. Matthew is saying, do you see it? Jesus' death opens resurrection life. We don't have all of the details here. We're not given the whole picture. But you can just begin to imagine, can't you? Holy people, people who'd worshipped God in their lives, who had died, suddenly reappearing, wanting to say, hello, 
give you a handshake, give you a hug in your shock and surprise. This is why Good Friday is good. It begins resurrection life. We're told in verse 53 that after Jesus' resurrection, these people went into Jerusalem and appeared to many others. Jesus' death opens resurrection life. And what we have here is a picture for you and for me of what wait awaits us if we follow the Lord Jesus Christ. Good Friday opens the door to our resurrection life. What does that mean for you and for me today? Well, it means that death is not the end. That's always good news, but especially because each day currently we hear a death toll on the evening headlines. We have life after death to look forward to. Just imagine this new life. Just like these people on Good Friday who were raised, we will enjoy a physical, bodily resurrection. God has a new creation, a new place for us, full of his goodness and good things, which we will see, hear, touch, smell, taste and enjoy. Resurrection life. A place where friends and families will be reunited forever, where there'll be no more death or tears or mourning, where we'll be with God forever. Jesus died that we might have life. But let's be clear, it's not just a future thing, not just a past to some future existence. It's a gift for today. The tombs broke open the day Jesus died. Resurrection life starts now, the moment we accept the benefits of Jesus' death for us. Jesus himself said, whoever lives and believes in me will never die. And what is the chief benefit of Jesus' death? Well, the curtain in the temple was torn open in two to show that we have access to God. We can come to him as children. Jesus was forsaken by God so that we might come to to God as his beloved children. Friends, isolation is not easy, is it? It's really hard being cut off from the people you love and the society in which you live. But we're not cut off from God if we have resurrection life. We have the greatest intimacy the universe affords, even now in isolation because we're brought to God through Good Friday. He holds us, he sustains us, he loves us, he hears us when we pray. And so if you're anxious, ask for his peace. If you're impatient, ask for his patience. If you're lacking compassion for the people in your household, ask for his compassion. If you already have resurrection life with God, then make the most of it today. Enjoy intimacy with God. Ask for his help to enjoy him. And ask for him to help you each day. And if you don't yet have this resurrection life, then realise that the answer to the problem of isolation and all the struggles you face is not lockdown ending. Resurrection life brings you before God as his child, even without leaving your own home, as you believe in Jesus, the greatest intimacy the universe affords. So this Good Friday, like the soldier and the others, the centurion around Jesus as he died, will we say, this death is like no other. Surely he is the son of God. And will we therefore ask, for the resurrection life only Jesus gives. And as we receive that resurrection life, we do need to know that it won't feel like the new creation just yet. It's worth it, oh yes, it is indeed worth it. But Jesus warned Peter that anyone who wants Jesus and his resurrection life will need to take up their cross to follow him. Good Friday was hard for Jesus, today will likely be hard for us. And life as a Christian following Jesus, whether you're isolated or not, always involves great sacrifice. But we follow him precisely because 
Jesus went through Good Friday and rose again on Easter Sunday. In the same way, we follow him because he's opened up resurrection life to us and will do so again even more wonderfully when we see him face to face. So let's pray together. Almighty God, thank you for opening resurrection life to us on Good Friday. Please would you help us to receive Jesus' death for us. Please grant us resurrection life in him, with him. Please give us the certainty of a future with you and make that life alive in us now. To the glory of your name. Amen. I hope you've enjoyed these reflections for Good Friday and every blessing to you as we wait to celebrate together on Easter Sunday.